Johnny, welcome back to the Wanderlust Bus, part five of a four-part series of Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Today we're talking about how we're going to get the LEDs and all the gauges inside of the dashboard. And we are going to go pretty in-depth with this, so hang on tight. It's a lot of wiring. It's a lot of crazy extensions and cutting, and you'll see. Go check it out. I'll see you at the end. All right, now we are at the floor level of the driver's compartment. I'm sitting where the seat will sit. See, will, yeah, that works. I've got all the dash pieces attached. They're all attached from the underside and clamped on and, and all nice. The doors aren't actually there. They're just there along with the dash gauges panels because well, I wanted to see how it looked. Wouldn't you? Anyway, I've got all that done. Now it's time to be able to get the electrical current to all of my gauges in the dash boxes. So to do that, I need to extend out the existing wiring harnesses because they're just not quite long enough to get up there. The old the old dash was a real straightforward open giant piece of molded plastic, so everything just plugged up behind it. Mine is a six inch by three inch hole on the underside of this box that I have to get all this through, so I need a little bit more more play with it. So we're gonna get started by cutting these off and moving in from there. So Let's get started chopping these things apart. Now that I've got the harnesses cut off, I need to strip back all these wires on both the uh, wiring coming out of the fuse box as well as the harnesses themselves and we're going to put a fuse link well not a fuse link a wire link in between the two and uh, I'm just cutting pre-length cutting lengths before I start that way it's easier when I get going so all right once you get the harnesses cut off all you have to do is strip back all your wires and you can extend from there these I found are 16 and 14 gauge wires All right, now we've got all of our harnesses extended so we can go and move on to putting the lights and all the gauges in the boxes and we're gonna do that back on the work table. All right, so now we are back at our work table and we are getting ready to make our dashboard come together. And the problem we're gonna have is we need to get all of the gauges out of this into the new and wonderful wooden dashboard. So I think what I'm gonna do to make this easy is make it a two-step process. And I'm going to take all of the existing gauges out of here, one at a time, and wire them immediately again so that they are all labeled and put back together the way they are inside this frame. But I have to cut down some of the holdbacks that keep these gauges against the dashboard and I'll show you how to do that. And we're also gonna show you how to put LEDs in place of these incandescents that are in here. So we're gonna get started by taking this apart and taking it apart piece by piece. And then step two, we'll be transitioning. it. So right now let's get it out of this. that I've got all of the gauges out of the original panel, I can go ahead and get them into the new gauge panel. And what I did, as you saw in the time lapse, it was loud, sorry. As you saw in the time lapse, I labeled everything. Literally every wire has its own little label so that when I go to put this thing back together, it's pretty idiot proof. Because I wouldn't remember. And even if I diagrammed it to the best of my ability, I probably would get something lost in translation. So having the labels physically on each wire was the best way to go for me. Do it however you want to do it. This was what worked for me. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the box and we'll get started putting these in here. And we'll talk about wiring once I get everything all set up and ready to go. 
All right, so now we've got all of the dash panels recessed to where the pieces can go in, all of the pieces are taken apart, everything is ready to start going back together. And in order to do that, I need to start by finding a way to attach the dash boxes to the dash itself. And we're gonna do that with these. And I'll show the other camera here. And these are little ferrules that you can bring in and they'll receive a bolt so that I'm gonna go from the underside of the dashboard into uh, these and we're gonna get these in. I've got the insert nuts into the base for the uh, dash boxes. I can go ahead and mark them out and I've located the centers of each insert nut and uh, when you go up front you'll be able to lay it out and make it perfect. But that's the next step after we get these things back together. So if you labeled everything, you should have a good roadmap of where you need to go. Now I'm not gonna bore you. Put it back together the way you want it. Connect all the wires so that they match. It's that simple. I'm gonna get to it. All right, so I've got my first four rows, or my first four gauges on the top row in, and now I have to connect the first wiring harness. I am using a mirror to make it easier to see all these labels, because once they're down in, I made my box pretty tight so that it would be a nice compact box on the dash, so it's hard to see behind things, but with this mirror, easy. So I'm gonna get all these wires connected and match them all up. All right, guys, so it's done. Ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, dashboard. That's right, it is uh, all attached. Everything is nice and tight. All the gauges are in the boxes. All the boxes are attached to the dashboard. The aprons are all bracketed together, with the exception of this one, and that's because this is what I'm calling the as good as it's gonna get for right now in this very moment because you have other stuff to do still, dash. That's because we got to still install our defrost system on that side, and I'll show you that in another video later on. But for now, this is what it's going to be, and uh, we are going to move on to other things. But I wanted you to see when I started it up for the first time. So let's go ahead and turn it on and fire this thing up. That's not good. It didn't start. You know what? Hold on, I'll be right back. Ha ha. I know it sounds scary, it's a good sound. It's the air alarm making sure you don't try to leave without any air in your tanks. There it is. She started. That means I hooked everything up right. That means I didn't screw anything up. All right, guys, that's it. The dash is installed. All of the pieces are attached. The switches are in the front apron. The gauges are in the boxes. The lights are on. The bus has started. It's over. I've got it done. Well, except for a few little minor, minor things that we have to clean up at the very end. But that's it. I hope you guys really got a lot of information out of that. I got another video coming up on how I'm going to do the defrost. It'll be a little mini episode, and that'll be coming up in a couple weeks. But in the meantime... I want to give a big, big, big thank you to Ecopoxy and uh, Randy up there in Canada because those guys gave us a product that is second to none. I will recommend Ecopoxy to anybody and you'll see a lot more use of it coming up very, very soon in the rest of the construction. Our bathroom specifically, it'll waterproof the entire bathroom. So that's it, guys. I appreciate you coming along. That's the end of part five. That's the end of Paradise by the Dashboard Light. And uh, that's the end of the very front of the bus. Next, we're moving on to the floor. And once we are done with that, we'll figure it out from there. But the next step is the beetle kill pine on the floor. 
to get ready for construction of the interior. So join us then. In the meantime, stop by the website, thewanderlustbus.com. Check us out on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on all of the social media. And uh, don't forget, if you want to, we started a new Facebook group called Organic Wanderers, and we'd love to have you join. Until next time, guys, thanks for stopping by. It's Johnny with the Wanderlust Bus. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.